Oh, mate, it's, it's huge. My role in our cycling team is just to produce the most amount of watts and <laughs> go as quick as possible at the end of the race. To win sprints. Yeah. That's a, really, that's a well-defined role. Yeah. Well at least you know what you're there for. Yeah, exactly. And have you ever had a professional bike fitting before? Um, not in the last five years. Okay, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And what sort of trouble are you having on the bike? Um, yeah, this all stems from an accident I had, uh, nearly coming on 12 months now. And yeah, it's just twisted all my upper back and lower back out. So, and then my hips aren't aligned now. So th that's like a whole chain of effects going down to my knees and cleats. Sure. So you're having some trouble with symmetry issues pedaling on the bike? Yeah. Okay, great. No worries. We'll see what we can, what we can do to figure all that out. All right. Let's have a look at these feet of yours, mate. It's a reasonably normal foot. The arch deforms normally. The rear foot is mildly unstable, but at least it's symmetrical. There's nothing really weird going on here. So you get a bit of overdevelopment in your anterior chain on the right, like we spoke about before, and a little bit of overdevelopment of the posterior chain on the opposite side on the, on the left. So this again sort of implies that you are dropping your right hip forward, which we kind of know from your description of your symptoms. So bend your legs up towards you, mate. <coughs> That's it, hold there. All right, lift your bum up off the ground for me and then put it back down and relax. That's it, let your legs go floppy. All right, now you're a bit of an enigma. When you stand and walk, you give the impression of having a shorter left leg, yeah. but I'm pretty sure you don't have a shorter left leg. Most of this is an aberration of your torsion that you've got in the pelvis. So you can see this hip has only, it's got about sort of 60 degrees of external rotation and about 10 degrees or even five of internal rotation. Whereas the other hip has got less external rotation and more internal rotation. So this one goes less far that way. It's got probably, it's missing probably 20 degrees there, but that 20 degrees is here. See how much better the internal rotation is in this direction? So the other, the other leg kind of goes to there and stops. This one, the mechanical block, is right out at like 30 degrees. So this either means that you've got two different hip joints, like the orientation of the joints in the pelvis is different, or your pelvis is twisted. Yeah, and it's yeah. most likely the second one from that big incident. Your rotation's reasonable and you should have Probably a little less rotation on this side, I'm guessing. No, more clunk. Bit of a manipulation there, mate. We probably got that on camera. That'll be, that'll be $75, <laughs> yeah. So the Kairos do. All right, flip over onto your front, man. Just put your chin on your hands like this. All right, let's check this left SIJ first. Even that one's pretty sticky. You're not going to win any awards for flexibility. <laughs> yeah, that SIJ just doesn't rotate forward. It just kind of blocks up as soon as we extend your hip. Yeah, it's a subtle one. It's, I've seen worse, but it's enough to, it's enough to give you the shits. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a little bit of, as you, as you mentioned, a little bit of what we call a rotoscoliosis, which is very, very slight. You've got a slight twist along the long axis of your spine. Certainly the most complicated part of you is the asymmetry by a country mile. Yes. It looks like there's a bit of a twist in the pelvis. Now I'm gonna show you how to undo that, but before we touch it, let's have a look at how you look on the bike. All right, everyone, this is a beautiful example of a textbook pelvic obliquity issue. Craig's uh, got whacked by a car from behind quite badly about 12 months ago, and uh, it's knocked him well out of kilter. So you can see from the top down view that he is substantially forward on the right. I've just put a steel rule across the back of his pelvis here to show you what we're talking about. So he doesn't drop his right hip badly on the downstroke. He just sits very torsioned or twisted to the bike. You can see the movement of his pelvis laterally is only slightly greater with the right side as he, as he puts pre pressure down on that right foot. Uh, but the twist in, in that kind of uh, longitudinal axis to the bike 
is, is quite substantial. So this is our primary goal today, to get rid of as much of this as possible. And this is a real, uh, this is a doozy, this one. So um, hopefully we can get a good result for Craig, or at least figure out what's doing it so that he can start to undo it off the bike if that's what is required. Um, so we've messed around with Craig's position a bit. Uh, we've identified essentially that his main problem with this asymmetry is his pelvis. It's uh, been a bit twisted for a very long time. The right side of his ilium, the sacroiliac joint, was really jammed up. And what we did, we did a little test. We got him down on the, uh, on the treatment uh, mats here and we basically manipulated his sacroiliac joint. We stretched it out really strongly for a couple of minutes. Threw him back on the bike and he looks a million times better straight away. He hasn't sat this square on a bike for a while so he feels a bit odd. He certainly doesn't look perfect but his symmetry is much improved. You might notice he's not tipping the bike as badly to the left as he was before. And you might notice if we view him from the top, some, but not all of the obliquity in his pelvis is gone. He's still a little forward on the right, but it's much better than it was. So in this case, what we've figured out is that he has no leg length discrepancy. There's nothing wrong with his general position, but he doesn't have a positional problem. He has a Craig problem, as I say. He's twisted and a little bit out of shape. He's got a lot of muscular asymmetries as well. So in this case, what we're gonna do is not mess with his position too much. This is gonna be a tale of uh, five different sessions over 12 months, no doubt. We're gonna slowly unscrew Craig's pelvis. And uh, he's gonna do most of the hard work. I'm gonna give him a bunch of exercises to do and a little bit of stretching and this kind of stuff. And over time, he will gravitate back towards, hopefully, very high quality symmetry. At the moment, he's a lot better, probably 50% better straight away but uh, we need to undo this out of his pelvis over time. So it's gonna be a bit of a long process. What we have actually done is move his left cleat back on the shoe. And what that's doing is dragging his left foot forward towards the front of the bike, which is actually helping him temporarily to square up on the seat. So this is definitely a temporary measure. We're gonna give him some homework now and uh, I'll run you through these as we go, because these are pretty specific things that you would only really do if you had a pelvic torsion. And um, we'll, we'll give him a bit of work to do uh, at home, just, just to add to his workload a little bit. But this is just helping him to learn where it is that the center of the bike is, where, where he can sit squarely. And we're gonna get him to do a bunch of sort of zone one, zone two rides, with this in place as a method of retraining his central nervous system. And as he kind of goes along and his pelvis untwists, we'll slowly creep the cleat back to where it should be. And eventually we'll end up hopefully with a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty good result long term. Okay, we've finished up uh, giving Craig all his homework. I've given him quite a lot to do. We're gonna do a bunch of single leg isolated strength training. He has a lot of muscle imbalances. So we're gonna work on his posterior chain of his right leg and the anterior chain of his left leg. And so we're gonna work on his right glute his right hamstring, but his left quad. And this is because he's majorly muscularly asymmetrical. We're gonna try and even all of this stuff up so that the drag on his pelvis, which is where all these muscles attach, is fairly equal and it will help him to untwist over time. So with homework, stretching, so strength training, homework, stretching, and also the little trick we've done with his left cleat where we've moved his left cleat back on the shoe, which pulls his foot forward. It's gonna temporarily help him to sit squarely on the bike. And we're gonna review him as we go to make sure that this is all taking well and he's going well. And this is one of those problems which I mentioned to Craig. This one often slips through the cracks. These sacroiliac joint problems, very, very hard to diagnose and very tricky to fix. But this protocol uh, works. I don't think I've ever had it fail. Um, so yeah, you won't be the first, Craig. Yeah. No. Every, every, this works every time, as long as the sacroiliac joint can still move. Some of them get so beaten up and so fused after 30 years of being like this, that they basically just can't move and it's impossible to get them to, to rotate properly. But Craig has only had this for five to 10 years, slowly developing and his immediately freed up when we manipulated it. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how much better he looks. This is uh, day two here. Uh, the man in the moment behind me here, Mr. Mr. Wiggins, who is absolutely on fire at the moment. He's uh, winner of tour of, tour of, what is it? Winner of stage, was it three or two? Stage, stage two. Stage two, sorry, of the tour of Langkawi. Uh, recently took out, took out the Noosa crit. 
and uh, in spectacular fashion from some fairly uh, big names. And look, Craig's recent success is completely due to my intervention, 100%. He's, it's not that he does like amazingly hard work or trains well or look after himself. It's basically the excellent work we've done with his position. No, it's a, it's a complete lie. But uh, you will have seen the footage by now of him beforehand, how asymmetrical he was, mostly from the big crash that he'd had, or a rather a hit and run, not really a crash. He looks a million times better today. It's eight weeks down the track. Craig's been doing the rehab that we've given him. I basically didn't change his position initially when we first saw him at all. All we did was essentially give him a heap of homework to do to make his body more symmetrical. We made one change to his position really, which was to drag his left foot forward on the bike to make him a little bit, to sort of force him into better symmetry. But essentially, Craig has basically done exactly what I've told him to do, and I can already tell he has because he looks a million times more symmetrical. You can actually see him from the front here. If we zoom in a little bit, the tracking of his knees is infinitely more symmetrical than it was before. You can tell he's not hanging to the side on the bike anymore because the bike is vertical. There's no sort of tipping across one way or anything. And that is one of the reasons why I use a, an unstable trainer. Because we can tell now that Craig, is, his mass is fairly central on the bike because it's not tipping one way. There's a huge improvement in his symmetry. So um, we'll get a few more shots here of him from, from above and from behind, which shows the improvement in his pelvic symmetry, which we already know to be there. And here he is from above, much better. Still got a little bit of that obliquity left, but that is a huge change. So Craig's kicking goals here. We're gonna make a couple of changes today and try and uh, get him a little bit further along this path again. Hopefully some more wins to come. And uh, we've also thrown a minus 20 degree, 140 millimeter data pista stem on this bike. It's one of the recommendations I had for Craig. He actually looks a lot more comfortable on the front end like this, a lot more relaxed in the arms. So uh, it also makes the bike look awesome. So that's another bonus. So kicking goals, the ARA team on fire at the moment. They're winning left, right and center. Hopefully uh, mate, some, some contract talks with some Europeans soon, eh? Okay guys, so this is the, uh, the last piece of the puzzle with Craig's positional changes. We've moved his seat back a bit, or rather his seat has slipped back, uh, which was one of the few changes that I was actually gonna make to his position. So his saddle has gone back a bit. He feels a lot better back there. This is the other piece of the puzzle here. You may remember in that, uh, the first half of this video series we did with Craig, part of the solution to forcing him into better symmetry was to stagger the left cleat back on the shoe by about six, seven, eight millimeters. And what this did was drag his left foot forward towards the front of the bike and essentially force him into better pedaling symmetry for a period of time. Craig's done excellent work freeing up his sacroiliac joint and working on his, his single-sided muscle strength imbalances. And he looks a million times better. He's now symmetrical enough that uh, if we left him like this, he'd have no further trouble with anything. What we're gonna do though is leave this and with about a two millimeter stagger now, we've, we've gone back to them being symmetrical and he, and he starts to tip the bike slightly to the left. So we're just gonna leave this tiny bit of cleat stagger in for another couple of weeks and then hopefully get rid of the last bit, little bit of it. But it's only two millimeters now and that is a really, really, you know, that's a very minimal amount. So he's looking really, really good. Except for these, you know, he looks a lot better than these shoes do. What happened there? Oh, that was the, uh, the crash. <laughs> Yeah, $500 crash that one, mate, was it? Yeah, steep one. So that was in the uh, Tour of Langkawi stage two. I, I wonder if we're allowed to splice some footage of that crash in to, oh, we'll to this. Fun, yeah, we'll see if that contravenes YouTube's uh, privacy laws or something. Uh, but Craig bounced back from that. No broken bones. The guy is made of steel. He must have bone density off the charts. And uh, he's bounced back from that. And more sprint wins to come, I assume, in the next sort of uh, couple of months, mate. We'll take all the credit for that again. That's, that's all my doing. <laughs>